this is my story about a tall, handsome guy whom I thought was the perfect date, <laughs> but who turned out to be something very different. It all started on a dating website. His name on the dating website was the name of a very expensive wine. So I thought, the man's got style. And we chatted so pleasantly. He had a dry wit. And I thought he sounded great. Somebody who could talk about modern art. Somebody who could talk about music. Somebody who would take me for lunches, appreciate the fact that they'd got an intelligent person hanging on their arm. I mean, I was actually alive. I was there at the Albert Hall when Jacqueline Dupre, age 17, played the Elgar cello concerto. It was amazing, and I was there when it happened. And then she got MS and couldn't play, and then she took to drink, and then she died. And after about a couple of weeks of messaging and some conversations on the telephone, I thought, why not? It's no fun going to the proms on your own. But he picked me up in a very nice car. I thought, oh yes, now this is definitely class. He was just so urbane. He opened the door, he said, after you. And unlike most sports cars, it wasn't that difficult to get into the seat. And I thought to myself, if this is what you buy when you're in a midlife crisis, I'd better get midlife pretty damn quick. And then he pressed a button and the top went down. He was really, really charming. And we chatted very pleasantly. He said he was taking me to his favourite restaurant. And I thought, well, if it's his favourite restaurant, if he doesn't mind being seen with me there, that's a good start. So he had a table book. And I think they might have seen him before, you know, because they were very respectful to him. And we sat down and we ordered. And indeed, he spoke knowledgeably of Beaujolais, and he, he had his own private bin. He was obviously a man who was used to getting what he wanted. Over the first course, he asked me, what are your favourite sexual positions? And I thought, is this something that you should be asking me when we're in bed, if we're going to go to bed? Do you want a list? So I passed it off over the entrees of a very nice steak. He asked me, how broad-minded are you? Would you be willing to wear a trap on and abuse me with it? I don't think I would enjoy that. So I thought, well, we'll just carry on with this as best we can. Then we ordered pudding. I never met a pudding I didn't like. Over that, he sated, I think you'll do nicely for me. Mm. I don't want you to go out with anybody else. And as soon as my wife and I are back from our six week holiday in France, I'll be in touch. How dare he? He wanted me to be his mistress. He wanted me to announce my favorite sexual positions. He wanted me to abuse him with the strap on. He wanted me not to have any other partners other than him. And he didn't offer anything in return. No jewelry, no presents, no, well, darling, I'll pay your rent if you like. So I gathered my bits up with my handbag. I stood and smiled at him and I said, you're nothing but a cheapskate. And I walked off. The waiter who served us was standing by reception and I said to him, don't say anything, but I shan't be leaving with the gentleman I arrived with. Would you get me a taxi back to the station? Certainly. I never heard from him again. <laughs>